Welcome to today's information session on Carer Gateway. My name's Wendy Hill. I'm joining you from the education and training team at Carers New South Wales. And today we'll be looking at Carer Gateway, the range of services and supports available to carers, how to access those supports, and what carers can expect when they're talking to Carer Gateway. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today and extend that respect to elders both past, present and emerging. So when we're talking about carers, the definition is really important. A lot of people don't actually recognise that they are carers and therefore they're unable to access some very valuable services and supports. So when we're talking about carers, we're talking about people who provide informal care and support to a family member or friend who could be living with a disability, a mental health condition, a drug or alcohol dependency, a chronic health condition, a terminal illness, or they may be frail due to age. And again, it doesn't matter what the relationship is. So a carer may be a parent, a partner, a sibling, a relative, a friend or a child of the person requiring care. I think that we really wanted to emphasise when we're talking about carers, we're not talking about professional or paid care workers. Carer Gateway focuses on services designed specifically for carers. It's designed to make government's carer supports and services easier to navigate and more accessible. It also aims to increase government's investment in services that are proven to improve a carer's quality of life. It introduces a range of new tailored supports and services to help carers manage their daily challenges, reduce stress and plan ahead. We're going to explore a range of national and regionally based services. There are four individual lead organisations leading the delivery of services and supports on behalf of Kara Gateway across New South Wales. These lead organisations are referred to as Kara Gateway service providers. We can see from the table below, Benevolent Society is the lead organisation for Central and Eastern Sydney Northern Sydney and Western Sydney. Wellways Australia is the lead organisation for Nepean, Blue Mountains and South Western Sydney. Live Better Services is the lead organisation for South Eastern New South Wales, Western New South Wales and Murrumbidgee. Carers New South Wales is the lead organisation for Hunter, New England, Central Coast and North Coast. From the carer perspective, their experience will be quite seamless. They're simply calling Carer Gateway, emailing Carer Gateway or contacting Carer Gateway through the website. Their query will be automatically transferred to the lead organisation in the area from which they live. It's likewise for any service providers or people such as yourself contacting Carer Gateway on behalf of a client. When we look at eligibility for Carer Gateway, we're talking about anyone who is providing personal care, support or assistance to a person living with a disability, a medical condition, a mental illness, or who is frail due to age. The carer does not need to be living with the person they're supporting. I also wanted to mention that we also uh, support young carers. So these are people aged 25 years or younger who are providing that personal care, support or assistance to another person. The caring role does need to be ongoing or be likely to be ongoing, which means it's anticipated that person needs support for six months or longer. The exception is if the carer is supporting somebody with a life-limiting condition. Eligibility for Carer Gateway is not connected to the services the care recipient is receiving. So a carer can still access Carer Gateway if the person they're supporting is on an NDIS plan or has a home care package. There are no citizenship, residency or specific visa requirements. Primary carers and at-risk carers may be prioritised for certain kinds of support. Uh, and that means the person providing the, the bulk of the caring role to that individual may receive a bit more support than secondary carers or other people involved in that person's care. 
So Kira Gateway comprises of a website and a telephone number. Uh, I'm first of all going to talk you through some of the services that are available over the phone or online. Uh, the first one is phone counselling. So people can actually contact Kira Gateway and arrange telephone counselling. There's lots of information in, and, and resources available, uh, including information about carer payments and allowances, uh, fact sheets that are relevant for carers, uh, lots of advice and tips, and also where to go for additional support and information. Carer forums provide a safe, anonymous space for carers to connect with, with each other online, uh, post questions, share information and support each other. There are also a range of self-guided coaching topics. Um, so carer coaching gives carers an opportunity to explore the impact of the caring role on their life. Uh, and each session has evidence-based information, practical tips, resources, reflection activities, and real stories. The types of topics include health and well-being, understanding the caring journey, what makes for good support, understanding inclusion and advocacy, work, study and volunteering, getting your finances in order, everyday life, and how do you feel? There are also a range of skills courses that carers can access and complete in their own time. The skills courses provide information, insights and practical tips uh, to help carers develop their new un their understanding and the skills that are important in their caring role. Each online um, self-paced learning module takes from 20 to 40 minutes to complete and carers have the opportunity to download these responses um, and save for future reference. The courses include dealing with stress, effective communication skills, recharge and reconnect, legal issues, social connection, and sleep. Carer support planning is where carers work directly with the Carer Gateway service provider to identify any in-person or face-to-face -face service that may be of benefit. Generally, uh, these conversations may take around 45 minutes. So carers are encouraged um, to prepare themselves for a big chat uh, if it's difficult to, to spend all of that time on the phone, carers can undertake this discussion over two phone calls if need be. So carers that are wishing to use the face-to-face -face services of the Carer Gateway do need to go through an intake, registration, needs assessment and support planning process. The exception to this is when carers are seeking basic information or they're seeking emergency respite. So there'll be a guided discussion about aspects of a carer's life, including their health, work, finances, how they feel, their caring role, how they're managing at home, and what time they have for themselves. Depending on the circumstances, some of these elements will be explored in more detail. This will give carers an opportunity to identify and implement supports across a range of different life domains that will help address their specific needs at the time of contact. This process map has been included to help people understand why the carer support planning process may take about 45 minutes or longer to complete. A lot of time is spent on understanding the unique carer needs, uh, including things like the carer's aims, their responsibilities, their care load, living circumstances, their support networks. This includes formal and informal supports, and the general relationship with the person they're caring for. There are dedicated young carer support worker teams that undertake these, these discussions in an age appropriate way. The holistic needs assessment is undertaken as a conversation with the carer. And the aim is to identify and implement supports across a range of life domains that not only address the immediate needs of the carer at the time of contact, but also to sustain them in their caring role in the longer term. So as I mentioned, these in-person services, carers do need to go through that carer support planning process. And an outcome may be that the carer is linked in and referred to some of these other services listed below.
In-person peer support is a free facilitated peer support forum specifically designed for carers to connect with people in similar circumstances to themselves. There are four sessions in total uh, and the delivery may vary slightly from one area to another. In-person counselling is a free counselling service for carers who are experiencing difficulty with anxiety, stress, depression and low mood as a result of their caring role. Emergency respite is designed to support carers who face an urgent, unplanned or imminent event that impacts on their ability to do their caring role. Carer Gateway will be able to help that carer explore the options available to them, uh, which may include the arrangement of replacement care in circumstances where all other options have been exhausted. This support is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are two different types of carer-directed support packages. The first one is a one-off amount of money to help a carer purchase an item that directly contributes to supporting the caring role or supports that carer to access education or employment. An example may be that the carer has assistance to pay for a course or to pay for technology, such as a tablet device or a laptop. Some young carers have used technology for better access to school or to university. Others have used the package for driving lessons or for extra tuition. The second type of carer directed support is a package that allows carers to purchase a range of practical supports for a short amount of time. So the example may be carers might um, seek assistance with housework and, and maybe uh, be offered up to 12 weeks of housework assistance. Other examples include cooking, respite and assistance with transport. In-person carer coaching is a new service that commenced in July this year and it invo involves free psychoeducational service specifically to assist carers to acquire new skills and the resilience that's needed in their caring role. So carers will work with the coach to build and develop skills identified during the consultation process. So in summary, Carer Gateway comprises of a website and a telephone number. The telephone number is available Monday to Friday from 8am to 5pm. There is an option to seek emergency respite through this same phone number 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For carers or for anybody wanting to contact a Carer Gateway service provider, simply call the 1800 number, visit the website or send an email to Carer Gateway. It will be automatically directed to the Carer Gateway service provider in the area in which you're calling from. Carers also too are reminded that if they're wanting to access in any of the in-person face-to-face supports, they will need to go through the carer support planning process. Carers are also encouraged to contact Carer Gateway at any time should their circumstances change. Thank you.